today we're just going to work on uh, the prolonged stays with Sasha. When we have in obedience inside, it could be 100%. The moment you start adding other factors to it, it could be compromised. So we're just going to review that with giving her a prolonged stay here at the front door. And we'll work short iterations first and then a further distance. So if you want to place Sasha on that mat, and you, we can start working small distractions with you walking to the cars first. Sasha's pretty advanced with her obedience. For us, we see this as we're placing her. This is very broad for her, but when we can put her on a mat, a placemat, her bed, she can see that image, that picture clearly, and so it's easier for her to stay. So she's good right there. So I just want you to go to pick one of your cars and open it up, act like you're grabbing something and come back to it. So every time we tell Sasha to stay, we are not going to be lazy. We're going to come all the way back to Sasha and reward her correct. So right now we're working on a prolonged stay with a larger uh, distance. John is walking to the mailbox currently while Sasha is here holding down the front door. New picture for Sasha. She doesn't never seen that person before, especially coming up with a noisy bag. Good payment, good. This next segment of training, we're going to be going over her recalls, okay. as well as getting her familiar with your guys' perimeter. So as we go through this, we're just gonna keep inching around the backyard just so she can get familiar with it. And when we go over perimeter searching and longer sends for bite work later, she'll have a, an idea of what your guys' picture of the background looks okay. like. With this, let's go ahead and get, let's just walk Sasha down to the fence line so she knows where this perimeter is. We will let her, give her a free, let her sniff around and then Whoever's, whoever wants to recall first can go ahead and do that. Sure. So right now, John's just gonna get in position. We're gonna do a long recall. We're just keeping Sasha distracted right now. When John is ready, he will give the command here. When Sasha starts running towards him, So it's the same concept. There's more distractions out here. There's a basketball court in the middle. There's trees now. So at any time, if Sasha was to divert, go ahead and give her that correction on the e-collar until she gets back on the appropriate path. All right, so let's say you're a door, okay? And I'm a couch. In order for this couch to get inside your house, you have to what? Open that door, correct? Cool. So once that, once Sasha comes in, the couch comes in, she has to pass you before, so you can rotate that couch and then you can close the door. So if she's on you right here and you're trying to get her into a heel or a foose and it's not working, just reset by taking a step back and then redo, redoing it, okay?
we all have different personalities. Shasha knows mine, yep. Eric's, and the trainers. Yep. Now she's getting used to you guys. Yep. Now, you know, she's going to start understanding the way you guys move, yep. how you guys walk, the, the picture, the sounds, the voice. Yep. And it'll just be muscle memory to her here soon. Awesome. Yeah. When you're teaching the dog, I am the way that turns it off. When she gives maximum effort, you're just teaching her. When you hit that top RPM, the faster you get from A to B, and the B is speed, right. the faster it turns it off. Right. If you work fast now in the beginning, you have some room to play. But if there's no fire under the butt in the beginning of this relationship, she'll end up like Eeyore because you never established a... Uh, how fast is the answer to the open sesame get the bag right. and so you're doing that from the rip later when you're like i know she is reliable now i'll correct for when she makes mistakes tradition each year. Um, so tonight I am going to sing John Happy Birthday.
up guys, another Titan Medical Center movie review just for you. This week we conquered 65. And this was an awesome movie about past, present, and I guess the future, right? So at this point, the biggest star in this movie, I guess was Adam Driver. You guys might know him as like Kylo Ren or he was in the Gucci movie as well. Um, he did a really, really good job as far as you know, the lead role actor. Um, you see him in some of the action scenes in there. There was some interaction with some of the different things on the planet that he crashed on. So you guys will have to check that out. There's another little girl in there. I don't know who, who, who she was or what her real name That's is. That's how important that little girl was. But she really couldn't communicate, so <laughs> it was kind of crazy. So for this one, I'm probably going to give a 4.3 star rating. Um, you know, I thought it was good. I thought there was good action in it, but I thought it could have been a little bit better. You know? I thought it could have been a lot better, actually. However, I always like to give the positive and negatives. So the positive out of this, if you are a Jurassic Park fan, this could be a good movie for you. Who doesn't there's, like Jurassic there's Park? There's dinosaurs though? and all this fun stuff. Talk about a huge franchise here. A, a huge fun stuff, right? However, the stars on this for me are gonna run somewhere around 3.5. The reason I'm giving it a 3.5 is because I feel like the little girl in the movie could have been a little bit more communicative, and I also think we could have had a little bit more of a backstory on that. That's just my personal true, opinion. True, and true. And the whole movie was based on this, these two, these two people, yeah. and th that was it. There was nobody else. There, there was a backstory on him, but there really was no backstory on the other character. Yeah. Which you gotta set up some sort of backstory so people can relate, they wanna be on that character's side in the movie, and take it, and root for him all the way through and through. Whether the villain or the hero. And, uh, you know. What about you, Peter? Yeah, what about you, Pete? Two. <gasps> Two. Wow, I mean, Peter's tough, dude. So, stay tuned for our next movie review, just for you, from the Titan Medical Center family. And uh, we'll be giving you guys the goods, the bads and maybe some ugly we don't know but it was a good movie if you guys want to check out if you like prehistoric things you might like this movie if not it's probably ain't the movie for you so make your own decision what you want to do check it out don't check it out movies are always good and fun hold some fun for the family true that so regardless if you like it or not just go true americana so we'll be back with another type medical center movie review for you next time stay tuned see you then What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Therese. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. That's right. Every week, me and my beautiful little wife over here, who's all dressed up in her little suit. Today, yes. <laughs> is bringing you great advice to ignite, excite, enhance your relationship all the way to a new positive level that maybe you've never reached before or you need to get back to, right? Because we might all lose our way sometimes. And don't forget, if you're in or out of a relationship, this advice will adhere to you. So if you're not in a relationship currently and you're looking for that special person, adhere to our advice and we'll hopefully make it a successful relationship on your next run. At least on your side, what you're bringing, you can have all the right goods and everything you need in your tool belt to make your relationship the best one possible, right? Yeah, I mean, it applies for everybody. So you can watch every episode or you could just go back and like watch all the other ones too. That's right. So if you need to sharpen up on some of the different things or you haven't seen all the other episodes, you can go back, rewind, rewatch, and take all that great knowledge and apply it forward, right? Yep. How beautiful is that? It's like a treasure <laughs> trove of information for your relationships. Exactly. Jeez. I mean, we should be getting paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> So today's not going to be any different. We're going to cover some different things that happen in a relationship negatively, right? And there's usually 25 common things that go wrong in a relationship. Well, John's going to list 25. We're things. not going to cover all 25 things. Oh my things. goodness. I ain't got enough time in this We're half an hour, 14 night. minutes or whatever I'm getting told to John, shoot this show. I only had 15 minutes, I told him. It's hard to cover every single aspect. So we're going to cover a couple today and we might cover a couple in a future episode for you guys. We don't want to stick with the negative. So we're going to show you the positive side of this too and how you can maybe um, turn one of these negatives into a positive. So let's just jump right into it. Yeah, jump. Um, you know, I picked a couple ones to talk about today. One we're going to talk about is making sure you appreciate your partner. So losing appreciation, right? That's one negative thing that could happen in a relationship. Mm -hmm. It's very easy to do. All right, because we get in this relationship, we're so like excited, no. right? When you first get in a relationship, are you complacent? 
No, I'm saying like you're you you probably excited. Yes, that was the word you were gonna say. But I'm saying then you get yes. complacent, yeah. which wh- then leads. Why do you get to, complacent? Because then you get comfortable. Right. And right? why do you get comfortable? Because. Um, Those are good questions, right? I guess because you guys aren't really doing anything. Like it's the same. Maybe it's routine. Maybe it's routine, or maybe you're expecting your partner to do something that they've always done for you. Yeah. So true. when we talk about this, let's say it's your wife or your husband and they're getting you coffee every single morning. They bring it to you in bed. They make it a special way. It's so nice. got sweetener, perfect, or however you like it. It is perfect to you. And you get that cup every day and you don't even got to think about it anymore. Every day you wake up, you're looking for that cup of coffee. Now you think that cup of coffee is just magically just walking itself over there and putting it right next to you for you to drink every morning? No, that's your partner making that for you. And why? Because they love you, right? They want to show you this appreciation and that's why they do it. It's not because, well, it might be expected in your relationship. I don't know. It just depends on the relationship, but it probably not expected, but it's something that they started and they've kept along by doing this. Mm -hmm. And that's, you you'd probably be happy about it, right? You're like, all right, I get my cup of coffee every day. So being complacent, right? This means just getting used to it over and over and over. And then you start expecting. Then it's things. an expectation. Yeah. And one day they miss the coffee. Then you're upset about it. Then you're it, upset. Right? You, but, you, but, the, but, but then you may not think that you didn't say thank you for the past three months. Right. Every and, day. And how do you say thank you? Because there's a multitude of different ways to say thank you, right? Yeah. And there's ways to reciprocate things like this so you can show your partner, hey, listen, I appreciate you doing that for you and you know, I'm doing this for you because I love you and this is what I want to do for you to make you happy. And that's really where it comes into play, you know, when you get lost, because listen, we're all busy. Whether you have kids, you have a job, uh, you're a competitor, whatever it is, we all have different things that we're doing every single day on a personal level, on a relationship level, on a parenting level, and so on. So it's easy to lose our way on that journey because we're so, uh, you know, once we've got past the honeymoon phase in our relationship, we're so focused on what other goals we're needing to achieve or what other responsibilities we have to do. Mm-hmm. You might not be doing it on purpose. You literally might be working on a new project at work, uh, worried about what your kids are getting in school as far as grades, wow. and then coming home and you're, you're not even thinking about your wife, your girlfriend, or what's going on there because you're so focused on these other things. But then you gotta try to turn it off. Right? Oh, that's tough sometimes. It's tough. It's tough that's to turn tough. it off. That can be tough. Especially if you're a business owner yeah. or not even a business owner. If you're a good employee, you're worried about the, the job that you have and you want to do the best job possible. And you might be working on projects for that job. But if you are a business owner, it's hard to turn it off too as well because it's 24-7. Yeah, there's no open or close for us. There, it's, it, all the responsibilities lie on you as the owner, right? Mm-hmm. So you have to go back to that and say, oh man, like what else am I missing here? And reciprocate with your partner. That's the best thing I can possibly say. Like, tell them that you appreciate them. Show them the affection because that's a big part of it, right? Touching, kissing, holding. You know, whether it's, you know, five minutes in the morning or, you know, at nighttime in bed. Whatever you guys, you know, do or how you want to plan it out, that's probably the best way. You know, nice flowers sometimes, a dinner, you know, do a date. Um, show them appreciation and keep, date nights are always good. Keep that fire going. You got to keep yeah. the fire going. Yeah, date nights are always. Good. That's that's the whole point. If you don't keep the fire going, it's gonna go out, right? If you've ever put a fire together and you have to keep feeding that fire wood, right? When you're mm. outside and it's freezing out and that's the only way to stay warm, you're gonna feed that fire, right? So don't forget about feeding the fire in your relationship. Keep it burning so it it just everybody can see the flames and the smoke from yonder, miles and miles away. Yonder. Yeah, yonder. I yeah. know that word has to be Just make sure time. that when you're on your date, right, that you're not on your phone. Oh, that's one thing she wanted to talk about. Right? Make that's sure you're not on your phone. Talk about. I didn't want to talk about it. I was <laughs> just saying. Yeah, so we're, we're, we're out on a date, right, last week. And we're sitting there. We're having dinner. Actually, it was Saturday. <laughs> yes, it was just this past Saturday. We were sitting at this new restaurant we've never been to. Yeah, brand look, new. We're following our own advice, going out and doing new things We did something new. Yeah, I and mean, we only go to Eddie V's. Right? So this was very different. <laughs> had somebody see me from any of these afterwards. I, I know. won't tell. I'm, like, I'm not going to tell them anything. I'm like, oh my goodness. So we went and had this new, uh, this new place and had dinner there or whatever. And we were just waiting. And it's just, I don't know what to say. It's routine for me to pick up my phone, look at IG, look at Facebook. And not to scroll through the pages, to look at the business. And see, hey, listen, who's commenting on this? Is there a DM? What else is going on here? It's just, it, it's muscle memory, I guess. And of course, she's like, Oh, that's great. Yeah, yeah, you're on your phone. I'm like, uh, <laughs> oh, I guess I am. And I'm like, 
I'm like, yeah, um, you know, we're not taking our own advice on Cupid's Corner. Yeah. Remember how we talked about them not being on their phones at dinner? Yeah. That's, you know, you're kind of sort of doing that. Yeah. And then he looks at me, he's like, you're right, you're right, you're right, you're right. He's like, you need, and then of course, you know, there has to be a justification behind it. Like, but you know, and I'm like, no one cares, right? No one cares. I, I really, I, no one cares. Cause we only get this little moment, right? And it's like one hour for dinner. And I'm like, no one cares. Like, I don't care, no one cares. Literally, it's just me, you, and the food. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you literally have to think about it like that because if you don't, you'll always find a way to just like justify why you're pulling out your phone, right? Oh, my boss is texting me. I have to text them back. Oh, th this is happening. I got to do this, you know? Oh my God, I'm waiting on this one email. Let me just write this one email real quick. And you know, it's, you'll, you'll continue to justify it. So if you, I mean, I'm not telling you to say no one cares because John just knows that's my way of so saying. When you guys write the page, no one turn, cares. Remember, turn, except for me. <laughs> turn the phone off. <laughs> but that's my way of saying put the phone down, right? But don't say that. You know, you can be like, hey, listen, I would like to have some quality time with you. Let's put the phones away. It's only an hour, you know what I mean? Unless you're at the, the restaurant for three, four hours, which I, I, if you do go to a restaurant and you're there for three or four hours, you probably shouldn't go again. Yeah. But, you know, yeah, it was, it was just, you know, we, we're heeding our own advice. And you got, this, this goes along with making the relationship uh, better, right? Because you guys are spending this quality time together. You guys are still interacting. You're not growing apart. And this happens to a lot of couples out there because they don't spend that quality time together. They don't set time aside. They've got time for everything else because, like I said, in the beginning, it's a honeymoon phase. You don't want to leave your partner. And then it's kind of like, all right, we're settling in. And then, all right, we got to get back to what we're doing here. And usually two people have two different jobs. They're not working together because even people that work together, it might look all fine and dandy what we're doing, um, but not a lot of people can do it. it they get on each other's nerves. Yeah. They can't close it off or turn it off at the end of the day. So they go home and they start arguing about work or whatever it is. And you're like, man, this has nothing to do with our relationship, right. our personal relationship, business relationship. Yes. Personal. No. And you know, it, it's, it's something you got to shut off. It yeah, just, John, and I, shut John off. and I have really mastered that to some degree, to some degree, we've really mastered it. It's, it is really hard to turn it off, especially if we, you know, I haven't seen, I'm, I'm seeing him all day. Let's not say that, but I haven't been able to talk to him all day. And there was something I wanted to tell him about earlier in the day, but didn't get to talk to him. And now I have his attention and I'm like, oh my God, oh, I meant to tell you about this. And then, you know, that leads into another conversation about work, another conversation about work. So there is a point where it's like, okay, at this point, we're going to have to shut it off, like both of us, right? Yeah. But it's tough. Yeah. It, it, could be de it could definitely be tough. Me, however, I must say that, you know, John somehow has kept me in the honeymoon phase, right? So I've, I'm still in the honeymoon phase, right? I'm like a little baby monkey, right? And I'm just like, eh. and I just latch on to him and I don't want to go anywhere without him. It's so weird, okay? <laughs> so weird. I don't want to go anywhere without him. I don't want to do anything without him. I don't go out with the girls. It's, it's really strange actually because I wasn't <laughs> like this before I met him and then I met him and he turned me into this thing that I am today. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, I, I'm still in that honeymoon phase that he's talking about. You never want to leave. I'm like, yeah, that's me. I never want to leave. I'm always around. I'm like, hey, that's me over here. Oh, hey, hey, John, I'm over here. Yeah. Hey, John, what's doing? Oh, okay. You know, I'm, he's he's in the car in front of me. Hey, babe, I love you. What are you doing? I'm driving in the car in front of you. I'm like, oh yeah, that's me. Just want to say I love you. <laughs> True statement. True statement. The other one, progression. <laughs> you as a couple should progress. And we talk about this personally all the time about progression is key. Progression is key in anything you're doing, whether you're working a job, you want to progress. You want to get paid more, right? You want to get a better position. You work harder at that position to get a higher position and get a promotion that gets you more money. You have a better position. It all works out. Same thing in relationship. What you put in is what you get out. If you put in nothing, you get out nothing, right? Mm -hmm. So more that you put in and for good relationships, and both partners are reciprocating at this, then you guys both win, you guys both move forward. Whether it's your personal goals, whether it's your relationship goals. Um, for example, you guys wanna buy a house. You guys have been renting year after year after year, you've been talking about this. You guys need to set a goal aside of how you're going to obtain that goal, excuse me, a plan aside so you can obtain that goal. And at that point, you know, it's like, listen, after every paycheck, we're going to put a hundred dollars in the side in this account so we can have a down payment for our house. And you guys are working towards that goal. And I'm telling you, 
you guys working towards, I don't care, any goal, whatever it is, small or big, is going to bring you guys together. Um, you guys will have better communication, hopefully, because of that, because you guys are always talking like, hey, let's do this, or I have a good idea, let's do that. And we'll get there faster. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. You know, keep the argument out of it, because even when you're trying to obtain a goal, you might think you're right and they're wrong, and they might think the exact same thing, and you guys are butting heads about it. Yeah. Come together, compromise on it, see yeah. what's the best uh, best way to attack that goal, and then you guys come together and attack it like that. It's the best strategy. You guys gotta strategize with your relationship. Mm -hmm. Strategize all these different things so you can become better. And it, and it definitely will. So your progression is key, whatever it is. That's another one. I agree. Right? I agree it's a good one. That's it's a good one. one. It's a good one. Because if you, you don't progress, you, if you don't progress, wither away and you die. You stay stagnant and you die. Yeah. It happens to the dinosaurs. It happens to everybody. If you stay stagnant, you're going to die. So at that point, keep moving forward. Even if it's baby steps, you're still moving forward into that goal. So keep it tight and make sure you're moving forward. Last one, money issues. Don't let this get in That's your relationship. And it's a hard one. It's one of the number one factors for relationships to fail because people need money. Now they say money doesn't buy happiness, but it can definitely buy you some comfort, right? Yeah. So at that point, if you don't have a lot of money, that's okay. We didn't at one point either. Mm -hmm. Work hard, set that plan, and start strategizing how you guys are going to obtain more money to live a better life together and stop fighting about it. Put your plan together, put your budgets together, and move forward. And be open about what you guys are spending money on. And talk yeah. about before you guys spend money on it. Yeah. I feel like that happens a lot, right? Yeah. And sometimes it even happens when one's making more than the other because I feel like they make the decision like, okay, I'm making more money than you. So I just made an executive decision to go ahead and let my brother have $5,000 because he needed it. Yeah. And not tell you because I just forgot. Or yeah. You know, we're, we're in a tight situation. You know, I can't really, we can't really uh, meet the mortgage payment this month, but I'm going to go buy a, a belt at the store that's, yeah. you know, $500 that's or whatever it is. Work. It could be something so minute. I mean, even my parents used to fight over money and I mean, that's why they got a divorce. It, yeah. it was over money. Yeah. So don't let this plague your relationship or your marriage or your future relationship. Bad news. So that's it guys. Another Cupid's Corner for me and my beautiful wife, Sharice here. We're coming at you guys every Sunday at 11 a.m. on ABC. You guys can DVR it. And if you don't DVR it and you can't watch it live, don't worry. All these episodes are on YouTube. Just go ahead and type in Titan Medical Center, go to our page and you get to see all these great episodes and more. You can bookmark them too. So if you have to go back to remember some of this stuff or refresh yourself, it's there for you guys. You can do the subscribe, ding. You, yeah, so, so subscribe, <laughs> hit the all notification bell. So that's it, another Cupid's Corner, every Sunday at 11 a.m. We appreciate it, we love you guys, and we'll see you next Sunday. See you then.